All right, you guys, this is video E41-4. And uh, again, we're still in B here, so I'll explain the features and process of groundwater systems, what we're going to focus on for this project called the Awesome Aquifer Project. And uh, this front page here that we're looking at is something that I put together to help clarify the actual rules on the following page. Um, so let's uh, look here right under the task. So this project is designed to increase your understanding of groundwater concepts, including the three things here, an understanding of groundwater in the water cycle or hydrologic cycle, the physical makeup of an aquifer and changes to the groundwater system by human activity. Uh, so you're gonna learn about these things. Uh, you'll be interpreting some maps and making your own aquifer to help demonstrate and explain um, these concepts and show Mr. Alkire and myself that you know this stuff. So the final assessment, <clears throat> which will take um, the place of the regular type of assessment, which, which we do with some multiple choice online and then the short answer test, will be three parts. Station one, a short test or quiz over some concepts worth talking, you know, 10 to 15 questions here. And this is going to come directly from your groundwater and aquifer notes and your aquifer term notes that you've already done. Station two uh, will require you to interpret um, the maps or diagrams that are um, on the bulletin board outside my classroom. Um, you hopefully will, will have a chance in the next, if you haven't already, in the next few days to uh, uh, check out those QR codes and uh, see some information that we're wanting to show you in those diagrams as well as some questions uh, that we may be asking you about those diagrams. So some samples there. And again, this will be by 10 to 15 questions. Station three is where you and your partner have built a, a working model aquifer to explain to us all the concepts on the back page of this document that we're looking at. Okay, so here, before we move on and look at some of that stuff, here is my disclaimer for partners. Choose wisely. You get one other person. Okay. Um, I don't care if it's your best good friend in the whole wide world. If they're <clears throat> someone that, that is not going to work hard for you and with you, don't choose them. Okay. So the timeline. Um, six to seven days is where I'm thinking this will probably fall. And, and we're probably at least a day into or more into that uh, with getting the two sets of notes done. Okay. Uh oh trying to run my updates. Okay. So... On the back side of the sheet, flip the page, please. These are the actual instructions. And remember, this is an inquiry-based project. So project-based learning here. You and your partner have a problem to solve. The problem, how the heck are we going to demonstrate all of these things and explain or define them? Okay, so we have demonstrate and explain all of these concepts on the left-hand side. Okay, 18 things. How are we going to do that? We have to build a device that will allow us to do all of this stuff. I encourage you to visit this website here at the bottom that I've highlighted, uh, www.groundwater.org. Um, they sponsor this event in Science Olympiad and have uh, lots of information. In fact, this is really the only resource we use to prepare for this event. Uh, and, and we're very, very, very good at this event. Um, throughout the state of Michigan. So <clears throat> with this, um, I said, see where we'll supply the score sheets and all this stuff. Um, you are to build this aquifer from things at home. You do not need to go to the store to get any of this stuff. Um, sometimes students feel that they should or have to do things like that, but I'm telling you that you don't. All this stuff can be made from home. The aquifer does not need to be pretty. It needs to work, okay? So <clears throat> I've giving you here a list of things that you might need to use. Um, really, the only thing that uh, I don't want is perishable items like powder drink mix, like a Kool-Aid or something. We'll use food coloring uh, to be a contaminant. Um, <clears throat> and I would say you can start looking for this stuff, but you don't need to bring it in really until you know exactly what you're going to build in your aquifer. You might want to design it and then decide what each, each you and your partner are going to bring in. I will caution you one thing. See this right here? Plastic syringes. These are used to pump wells or start a siphon to get your uh, water flow moving. Um, these are things that 
<clears throat> you should probably bring to my room. Um, in general, you're going to bring all this stuff to Mr. Alkires in my room when you get it to school anyway. Hopefully it's in a plastic bag or something. We'll put your name on it with some tape and we'll put it in, in a certain place in the classroom. Um, these are things that, that other teachers should not see in their classrooms. These are not toys. They don't want to see them in their classrooms. Bring all this stuff to my room so that you're not getting in trouble for anything. Um, it has a purpose in my room and it is okay to have in my room. Um, I have had students, maybe someone was a diabetic and so they had lots of these plastic syringes. That's fine. Obviously don't bring the needle, um, just the syringe. Okay, they're very helpful. I have a few laying around I'd be happy to share. Um, but other than that, I, I have odds and ends of some of these things, but do not depend on Mr. Alkire or myself to, to provide you with materials. Uh, this should be cheap things that you find around your house. And of course, ask mom and dad uh, before you take anything out of their house. It's the competition. Um, the 10 minutes isn't necessarily going to apply. Um, we will cap the time you're allowed to take each of these tests um, because at a certain point, you either know it or you don't. Okay, um, It shouldn't take you forever to answer the 10 to 15 questions at station 1 or station 2. And your video will be capped at, uh, we might push it a little further than 10 minutes, but we'll say no more than 11 minutes, maybe 11 or 12 minutes on station three. Okay. Um, you probably shouldn't even need that much time, but you are going to make an iMovie out of this and uh, upload it to Vimeo. And we will certainly show you how to do that. We do not want you worrying about that. We want you worrying about this content. Okay. So let's look at the back page here. You'll see up top it says GW equals groundwater, SW equals surface water. Um, so note those as we're looking through here, mainly in the demonstration or explain or define section. And um, I'll give you a few quick examples. So recharge from precipitation. Precipitation is coming down onto the aquifer, onto the surface, and will recharge the aquifer. Why? Well, rainwater hits the surface, infiltrates through down to the groundwater. How can I show this? I can take a spray bottle and spray my aquifer. There I go. That was easy. Okay. Um, <clears throat> another one. Point out the water table. Well, when I start this, I'm going to fill up some water in it so that when I look at the side of my diagram for my model, I have water maybe halfway up. So half of it is the saturated zone. And there's the water table, which is just the water level underground. And then above that, up to the surface is the unsaturated zone. Okay, pretty simple. Um, one way to contaminate groundwater, well I could put some food coloring in there and uh, I could say hey there's an oil spill in a lake that I have here. There you go. Put some food coloring in and voila it's contaminated. Okay, so be creative. Uh, think about this. Um, you and your partner can toss ideas off each other. Use the internet. Use the resources we've given you. Groundwater.org is a great, great place to go. Um, I don't think you would even need to go to any other site, okay? Um, but you certainly may. Uh, with that, good luck. And remember, this is inquiry-based. Uh, you and your partner are solving a problem here. Um, Mr. A and I <coughs> will probably pose questions back to you when you ask us questions um, about Station 3 only. All right, we will certainly help you with Station 1 and Station 2 and understanding these ideas and concepts, okay? Good luck.